This is the instructional video to build the casing and the hardware and circuitry of our word clock kit. We do have another video on built putting the software, the code onto your, the yeah, onto the PK or the word clock. Um, so go check that out if you've not already seen it. It doesn't matter which order you watch the videos though. If you buy the kit from us, you'll get a 3D printed case, a faceplate, 3D printed legs, Raspberry Pi Pico W, nuts and bolts, 8x8 matrix RGB display, three wires and a lead to plug the Pico in. We also have a cheaper option just to buy the faceplate and the LED matrix alone um, because everything else is accessible to get your hands on and this faceplate will fit to any creation you make. So you can make your own casing or even if you've got access to a 3D printer, use our 3D files and print this casing. Also, um, there are cheaper microcontrollers than this, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W. It works on ESP32, but the batch that we bought weren't reliable enough to sell. So I've exposed a little bit of wire on this red positive wire, and I'm gonna put that on the fifth pin down on this top side. So I'm gonna flip the Pico over and count five. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna put it in that hole, and then I'm gonna solder it. So you can see there it goes under, I've put the wire under the Pico. And then I like to solder using a bit of blue tack to keep the wire in place. So I'm just gonna stick that on the blue tack and get my soldering iron out. If this is your first time soldering, we've got a great video teaching you how to solder. And um, we taught our little sister how to solder and she solders for her first time in that video. So link in description if you wanna check that out. Okay, now that's soldered, we're gonna focus on the ground wire. So again, I've exposed the wire, and then ground is any three pins from the edge of the Pico. So I've counted three from this side. It's a bit, bit, bit blurry, here we go. And I'm gonna put it up from under the Pico into the third hole from the edge. There we go, now I'm gonna put that on the blue tap, and then I'm going to solder that. So just to recap, the red wire should be the fifth hole from the edge on the other side of the Pico, and this black wire is the third hole. Now we've got the last wire. Ours is white. Yours may not be white. It's just the wire that is not red or black. We've exposed the end, and it's going to go next to the black ground wire, four away from the edge on the side closest to us. So next to the black wire, we poke it in from under the Pico. Um, and stick it into the blue tack to hold it in place and then we'll get soldering. It's understandable if you need to replay these steps back as we do go quite fast but you really need to make sure that these are all soldered in the correct place. So I'm just flipping, flipping the Pico over and I've brought this red positive wire over the back of the Pico and because that is going to be going into the top right solder pad when we solder it to the um, RGB LED matrix. So you can see it goes red, then white, or whatever color your will be, and then black. Again, it's really important that we've got these in the right place. Um, so double check that. Now I'm just bending the wire, so I've got a bit of room, because obviously this wire is quite long, so I need to trim the wire. So I'm just bending it to make sure I've got room if I mess up. And then I'm gonna trim the tops of the wire off so it fits inside the casing at the end. So that should give me enough room for leverage. So I'm just gonna trim it here, and then I will expose the tops of the wire. You can see it fits perfectly there. So you can see I've exposed the wires now, and you can see the general idea we're going for here, where the wires match the solder pads. So we're gonna solder them. I'll start with the black ground. Remember, it's important that you're using the right solder pads, because there's actually two on these matrix. But if if the matrix display is upside down, then you know you're right. So the black one goes in the far left, the ground. So I'm just blue tacking that in place and then I'm gonna get my soldering iron and solder it together. Now the white wire, remember this, this one goes in the middle, but remember your wire might not be white, it's just the not red or black wire. So this is going in the middle, I'm just lining that up with the blue tack to hold it in place. And then again, I'll get my soldering iron and solder it in place. So if you followed the steps correctly, you should be left with the red wire now. And that goes in the right edge um, solder pad. So I'm putting that in place with the blue tack and soldering it again. Now, sorry if the angles aren't good with the camera. It's 
quite hard to film um, when someone's up close soldering because obviously you don't want to burn yourself with the soldering iron when filming. <laughs> um, but hopefully you're following along just fine. Now it's okay to um, rewind this video throughout these steps because these steps are really important and you don't want to mess them up. Now, look, by the looks of that, I've done a pretty botched soldering job there. So I'm probably going to go back and fix that up. So I've just flipped the um, board around and I'm just going to resolder that red wire because I'm not happy with it. Now it's important to take your time with these steps because this is probably the most important part. Because if you wire it wrong, then the code's not going to work and you could break your board. So be extra careful here. Now after this stage, we're going to put it in the casing, but it's probably the best idea to plug your Pico in and check that this actually works, the code works on this before casing it up. Now this is what yours should look like at this stage. You've got the wires all in the correct places. Now let's get on with putting the casing in. So let's start with the faceplate. So put that to the side. Here's the faceplate, gurgle apps at the bottom and we're gonna flip that over. And then we're just gonna place this on top, making sure that the text is upside down. We want the solder joints that we've done at the top. So yours should look like this. Now what I'm going to do is get the next part to our puzzle. Um, not that, it's this one. Now it doesn't matter which way you have this, which side you've got it on. Make sure those slots though are at the bottom because that's where the feet go in. Just simply place that on top. Now I think this is a good time to say that um, we're constantly improving our products. So this stuff might change, it might look different, but the general concept you're seeing here will stay the same. So don't panic if this doesn't look exactly like yours if you're buying it after we've improved it in the far future. So this is the next piece to go on. You can see we've got holes to put the picos on. So those little bumps go inside the holes on the pico so it rests in the right place. So simply place that on top. Now I think what I'm going to do before I put the pico down is put two bolts through the opposite corners the diagonal corners of our casing um, just so it stays in the same place. So you can see I'm doing that now. It doesn't matter which two corners you choose, just two of the edge corners. This is again so it doesn't move around while I'm building it and it stays in the same place. Okay that looks all good now. Just final pushes. Okay so that looks good. Now I'm going to put the pico in the right place. So as I said earlier there are four bumps you can see there that go into these four holes on the pico so simply you just put it on now i suggest you glue gun this if you're going to keep this in this spot if you're not going to be taking it out so i suggest glue gunning it in place just to keep it more secure i'm not going to do that because i'll probably disassemble this um to improve it in the future now, I'm not happy with our design here. You can see at the top, the wires, there's a little notch in our casing where the wires are soldered. I kind of need to move that notch a bit further down. So, I'm not happy with that. I'll have to change that. Your kit won't add that, don't, that, pro that problem. Don't worry. Um, in fact, I'll change that now. I'm going to quickly run over to my computer and fix the design there. Okay, so 20 minutes later and I fixed this design flaw. Um, here it is, just fresh off the print bed of our 3D printer. I'll take that off. Um, and I'll just replace it. Um, I won't show... I've had to take the bolts out, by the way, just so I can disassemble it. I won't show me replacing it fully, but you can see here the difference. The notch is lower on our new design. So again, I won't bore you with me re-putting it on. I'll just jump cut to where it's on. So here. Um, so you can see it fits a lot more nicer. I've not got the bolts in, I'll have to put them in off camera, again not to bore you, but you can see the wires fit in nicely, they're not being poked too much by the solder joint. Okay, so I'll put the um, bolts in now to keep the case together. You don't, have to do the, you don't do this, remember, it's just because I've taken them out to fix the casing. Okay, the bolts are in now, um, we're all secure. Now I'm just putting the pico, resting it on those notches. Remember the notches go through the holes in the pico so it rests nicely up on there. Remember like I said earlier, 
you can glue gun it to make it more secure. I recommend doing that. I'm not doing it because I'll probably take this apart so I can improve the product. Um, right, so now we're doing the last, not the last piece, the back piece to our design. Here is the back piece of the case. You can see there's some holes that, that go in the Pico. You just slot it down. This little curvature button should be on the bottom right and you just slot it on like that. It's pretty simple. And then um, I'm just, this is what it looks like. Need to put the rest of the bolts in, so I'll do that now. I'll start off by putting the nuts on the bolts I've already got in, so that's the two opposite corners. Um, once I've done that, then I'll put the bolts in to the other two corners. You can see I'm doing that now, and then I'll screw the nuts on. Um, after that, your, um, what's it called, your word clock should be secure. Okay, I'll just jump to where they're all in. Here we go. So you can see I've got four in. Now there's an option to put, if you want the faceplate to be securely on top of the LEDs, there's two holes you can put in there. These are optional to put the bolts in there. It's just for extra accuracy. Um, but you can leave them out if you want to. The word clock would look good either way. Um, I'm going to put them in just to complete the tutorial, um, make sure everything is done. So I'm just as simple as screwing them in and then putting the nut on. We're nearly finished here. After this, we're just going to put the feet in and then I'll show you around. So nearly put the bolts in, um, just one more bolt. I seem to be struggling with that. Um, there we go. And then if I tip it upside down, you'll see there's two holes in the bottom where these two plastic 3D printed feet go. And they're just slot in there. It's a tight fit, obviously, so the feet don't fall off. Um, they just simply slot in the holes and it will rest upon the feet. So I'll show you it now. Let's just stand it up. There we go. You can see your final word clock. There it is. Let's just focus on it. Looks fabulous. Really happy with that. Hopefully yours will look the same. And you see the Pico. There's a little hole to put, plug the Pico in there. Um, fits nicely. So now just plug yours in and check it works. Now I'm just going to rest it down so you can see the final product. Here it is. So this is what your word clock should look like at this point. Well done. Hopefully you've um, completed the build building of your word clock. Again, we've got, if you've not watched the other video on where we put the codes onto the word clock, watch that now and you'll have your word clock ready in no time. Um, we've, this isn't our only product, we've got some coasters, got a Raspberry Pi Pico pinout PCB coaster, and we've got the VSCO cheat sheet, so if you're into stuff like this, you'll probably like these as well, so go check them out, links are all in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, bye bye, and enjoy your work talk.